and put our best foot forward and attack this day and prepare for the Jacksonville Jaguars. Just make sure that we just end up in the week one and all. You know, we're not in this thing just to go to the playoffs. We're not in this thing just to win the division. We're in this thing to go win the Super Bowl. This week on Titans All Access, your back-to-back -back AFC South defending Titans are hosting their division rival from Duval for the first time in 52 weeks. The Titans have their first shutout in three yeah. years. What should the Titans expect from the Jaguars? Jim Wyatt's talking that in talking ball. And his unusual punting form isn't keeping Ryan Stonehouse from putting up remarkable numbers as a rookie. Plus, Ryan Tannehill's toughness was on full display in a tough game against the NFL's best team. Tannehill keeping his eyes down the field, get the pass alive, pick up a big first down. Dave McGinnis dives deeper as we go beneath the surface. All of that and so much more is coming up right now on Titans All Access. The franchise record for touchdowns for the King. He's going to be sacked. Jeffrey Simmons. Henry throws. Touchdown, Titans. Tannehill. He's got it to Burks. It's McCrary with his first career INT. Intercepted. Fulton with the interception. Welcome to Titans All Access with Amy Wells. I'm Mike Keith. Looking forward to getting back in the AFC South this week as the Tennessee Titans play host to the Jacksonville Jaguars. TennesseeTitans.com senior writer, editor Jim White will join us for a preview of the game, which is always one of those contests where the tough guys really show out. If you want to talk about a tough guy, Ryan Tannehill is a tough player, and he continues to show up and make plays despite an injury. Yeah, he's been battling that ankle, but it's getting better. And as we go beneath the surface with Coach Dave McGinnis, we look at Tannehill's ability to move, not just to run, but to throw on the run and make things happen for this offense. Hey guys, Coach Mack here with this week's Beneath the Surface, powered by Microsoft Surface, beginning now. Today we're going to look at a couple of plays by Ryan Tannehill, both running and also some nice throws to Traylon Burks and Chiga Conquo getting major contributions from these rookie players. First play we're looking at, first and 10, 657 first quarter. Titans are in 11 personnel with Swaim aligned wide in a two by two, and he goes in motion for a man zone read. Eagles are in four man rush. Tannehill escapes to his right. Nicholas Petit Frere, the right tackle, pushes the outside rusher past the quarterback launch point. Tannehill very alertly sees all coverage people's back turns toward him and takes off for a 17 yard gain and a big first down. We're at third and three, 312 in the first quarter. Ball's on the plus 25. Titans are in 11 personnel. Receivers are in numbers plus three splits on the outside. This is a four-man rush again by the Philadelphia Eagles. They're in man-to-man, -man, single high safety, with a low hole rat player being able to help inside routes on shallow crossers. Traylon Burks is in the slot. He runs a deep post with a dagger coming in behind him. Puts on the Jets, runs away from the nickel. Excellent protection. Tannehill manipulates the post safety with his eyes and directional pump to his left, then hits Traylon with a perfect strike down the middle. Outstanding combat catch by Burks for a touchdown. Score now tied 7-7. We're at first and 10, 635, second quarter. Ball's on the minus 42. Titans are in 11 personnel, two by two set with condensed splits. Now, Eagles in a four man front. They're playing quarters coverage. The nickel is confused on the motion by Robert Woods. Second level defenders are now not properly spaced. Chig on a switch release runs a perfect seam route right down the railroad track. Trap pass action, left guard pulls across the center, excellent protection. Tannehill again looks off the safety and throws a strike to Chigaconquo, who does a great job of putting 21 yak yards after catch on a big explosive play. The Titans tight ends are stepping up as of late. Coach Mack just showed us that. One of those tight ends, Austin Hooper, also stepped up recently off the field and made a Titans fan very happy. Take a look. Oh, what? <laughs> I put my name on it? Oh. All right, now y'all go away so I can get my home. Okay, okay. <laughs> I'll play, I'll play, I'll play. I'll play. <laughs> Did you like playing more or coaching more? I tell these guys, play as long as you can. <laughs> So we do a lot of different things uh, with Youth Villages. They are a fantastic community partner of ours. 
and was uh, actually in a meeting with one of their leadership directors and uh, she had this incredible story of this young man and an adoptive family. I met Max almost a year ago and um, he was placed in our one of our foster homes right after Thanksgiving and I always kind of refer to his story as like a Christmas miracle because he had to go on respite and he went there for the weekend to Kevin and Suzanne's house. That Monday he called me and he was like, I don't want to leave, I want to go back there, can you please make it happen? About a couple days before Christmas, I was able to pick him up and take him there and he was so happy. Yeah, I mean, I always grew up, you know, with the idea to give back, wanting to serve in the community. And I remember seeing kids my age just born, you know, put lightly without the best set of circumstances. I always wonder why there weren't, in my opinion, enough people, enough resources going towards that. Um, so it just seemed like an underserved area. And I just want to fill that void. Good to meet you, man. Good to meet you, got, uh, got some Super Bowl tickets for you. You and your dad. It's yours, man. What? Enjoy. Dude, are you for real? <laughs> yeah, I don't know why they had to give you this big. They ain't that big, but uh, <laughs> yeah, you're going to get out of Arizona, you and your dad, Super Bowl 57. Enjoy, brother. <laughs> oh, thank you, man. Absolutely. It was crazy, man, seeing Austin Hooper come out with the Super Bowl tickets and then me seeing my jer this jersey with my name, my last name on the back of it, is something that I never thought would ever happen. From the places that I've been through and the things I've come through, it's just, it's crazy to think that I'm here and going to the Super Bowl. They're on camera so they can't get mad when I give you this too. Oh, I get your jersey yeah, too. Yeah, there you go. Appreciate that, man. This means a lot. Absolutely, brother. So it Absolutely. Thank you very much. First heard about Max's story and you know what he's overcome. So uh, we were we were definitely touched by his story. Them being Titans fans, you know, just really resonated with us because they are a part of a bigger family here, and uh, we wanted to give them the opportunity to go uh, watch the Super Bowl, and hopefully uh, they'll be watching us play there. The Titans nominated Derrick Henry as their Walter Payton Man of the Year. Coming up after this break, we're going to talk about why that was a great idea. Welcome back to Titans All Access. The Walter Payton Man of the Year Award is regarded as one of the NFL's top honors. Yeah, it's not only about what you do on the field, it's about the significance of what you do off the field in hopes that you make a lasting impact on your community. So for this week's Hughes and Coleman decision of the week, let's talk about the decision to make Derrick Henry the team's Walter Payton Man of the Year nominee for a second year in a row. Yeah, I think it's a good thing. Now there are a lot of good choices on the Tennessee Titans and we're very proud of the guys in the locker room, but it's hard to argue with Derrick Henry on the field. Of course, what he's been able to do over the last five seasons in terms of rushing yards, fantastic. He also set the team record for total touchdowns earlier this year. Off the field, Derrick Henry has been just as good with his two all foundation. I'm happy to announce that all your layaway balances have been paid off. The Walter Payton Man of the Year Award is prestigious. And in my opinion, when I think about why Derrick should win that award, it's about excellence on the field and it's about you know, volunteer work and charitable work off. We got a call from the neighbor across the street and said the house just exploded. Our youth we serve today is always looking for someone that they can look up to. It's important to me to give back because I feel like it represents my family and what I grew up watching them do. It's really hard to not say the word excellence when it comes to what Derek's been able to accomplish. I got tickets for y'all. <laughs> Derek's incredibly charitable. He has a huge heart and he does a ton of work in the community, but a lot of people don't know about it. Derek Henry came in, blessed me with a $15,000 check. We were able to go ahead and uh, buy us more clothes and stuff like that to uh, start over. I, I can never thank him enough for what he did for my family. The time that he spends with them on the shopping trips, they are excited and they feel appreciated because someone in his standings is coming by to share their time with them. We all wanted to represent, just help the community, be a blessing to others, be a resource to kids and do anything I can while you know, I have this platform and doing what I love. 
So impact off the field, yeah. That's a check as well. As the Titans' Walter Payton Man of the Year, Derrick Henry is one of 32 players who will receive a donation to a charity of his choice. And the 2022 Walter Payton NFL Man of the Year will be announced during NFL Honors, which airs the Thursday before the Super Bowl. He should win it. Oh, of course he should. <laughs> Coming up later on this edition of Titans All Access, Titans in Jacksonville. We've got a preview as we're talking ball sponsored by Duncan with our good friend, Jim Wyatt. But on the other side of this break, I'm sitting down with Titans punter, Brian Stonehouse. Stick around. When people come to Nashville, they do Nashville hot chicken. As soon as I came off the plane, everybody started telling me about hot chicken, hot chicken. <laughs> hey, it's Matt Moore. Be sure to check out Bud Dupree at Party Foul on Taste of Tennessee, exclusively on LG channels and LG OLED TVs. Welcome back to Titans All Access. When the Titans decided to part ways with longtime punter Brett Kern, they handed the keys over to a rookie in Ryan Stonehouse. Now, he has had a remarkable first season so far, but there's an odd way about the way that he punts if you really watch him. I talked to him about that and much more in this week's Nissan Insider. You win the job in training camp. Since then, you've been incredibly successful. The first start of your career has been really strong. Are you surprised by the success that you've had so early? It's a combination of hard work and just kind of like, you know, trusting in my ability a lot and, you know, the off-season work that I have done. I think that it's not as surprising to me just because of that. Um, I feel like that I've, you know, transitioned from college and the last season that I had and kind of wanted to have some things to improve on. What were some of those things that you wanted to be intentional about improving right out of college? Yeah, I think my consistency, I really wanted to turn over a lot of balls. Um, I really wanted to increase my hang time. Um, that was one of the things in college that, that I was trying to strive for every year. And that last year, I kind of had a little bit more than I have in the past. So I really wanted to improve that. You're the first punter in NFL history to have three consecutive games where you average more than 55 yards per punt. So I would say it's working. I mean, these are huge numbers that you're putting up. Have you stopped for a minute to kind of consider the magnitude of what you've been able to accomplish? in just the first part of your career? I think the main thing that, especially with this season being a lot longer than college, it's like staying with what you've been doing and just being consistent week in and week out. And I feel like that's where my concentration's kind of been on. Your drop, the way that you drop the ball to kick it is different than what other punters do. Explain that. Yeah, so the underhand drop started with, um, with my dad, my uncle, um, they they basically taught a lot of their guys when they ran camps um, how to do it. The guy that taught them was Ray Pelfrey in Reno. And um, it kind of just stuck when, when they would teach it. They just kind of explained that, hey, this is how we do it. And if it's comfortable to you, do it. And so when I was learning how to punt, um, it just was something that was natural and I've kept it. Everyone talks about your power. You are an incredibly powerful punter, but you're not the tallest guy. Where does that power come from? Finding that like quick twitch muscle um, was kind of something that's helped me in all the sports I've ever played. Uh, in football, I really, when, when I was younger, I trained a lot into a, it was like a tackling bag, basically, kicking a tackling bag. I know that sounds funny, but it, it, I truly think that that helped me a lot. And I think that that's where the power has really come from just being, uh, being quick to the football. When did you realize that you had the ability to kick stuff really far? I really didn't know that I had that ability till about my senior year of high school that I kind of was able to punt the ball decently far. And I think into college, I realized it a little bit more my, my sophomore year of college. You're a rookie, but nothing about you, the way you handle yourself, the way that you perform on the field, says rookie to anybody. Where does that confidence come from? I think it, I think it's just trust, you know? I trust my ability. I trust the work that I put in. Um, you know, a lot of people all talk about, well, I, I put in all this work and this and that, and, and some people don't truly believe that they did put in that work. Um, I do feel like I've put in the work and I'll continue to put in the work. And I think that that's what, having something to look forward to, uh, to improve on, it's the confidence of like, hey, I did this, but it could be better. And so I think that that's something that's kind of helped me throughout my entire career. 
This past Wednesday, the Tennessee Titans hosted the Mr. Football Awards at Nissan Stadium. It was the 16th year that the Titans have sponsored the awards, which recognized the best high school football players in the state's nine classifications and also the state's best kicker, regardless of classification. It's a special day for players, coaches, and families. But it's also one of the most special days of the year for the Tennessee Titans organization. We look for opportunities to, to use our platform to celebrate our community, to celebrate our neighbors, and perhaps there's no more natural opportunity to do that uh, than to celebrate Tennessee State high school football. So let's introduce you to the 2022 Tennessee Titans Mr. Football Award winners starting in Division I. Tennessee Titans Mr. Football for Class A, Jackson Cassidy, McKenzie. Mr. Football for Class 2A, Josh Jackson, Heiner Academy. In 3A, congratulations to Lance Williams, Alcoa. Mr. Football in Class 4A goes to Knoxville Fultons, Marcellus Jackson. Winning the Tennessee Titans Mr. Football for the second year in a row in Class 5A, Deshaun Bishop, Carnes. And for Class 6A, Mr. Football is Arion Carter, Smyrna. Moving to Division II, Tennessee Titans Mr. Football for Class A goes to DJ Merriweather, Clarksville Academy. Mr. Football in Class 2A, Junior Cheryl, Lipscomb Academy. And in Division II, Class 3A, we congratulate Marcel Reed, Montgomery Bell Academy. And the Tennessee Titans Mr. Football Kicker of the Year goes to Oziel Hernandez, Germantown. Congratulations to our 10 2022 Tennessee Titans Mr. Football Award winners. We have more Titans All Access right after this. Welcome back to Titans All Access from the Bet MGM studio. Time for talking ball. Presented by Duncan, and here is Jim White, TennesseeTitans.com senior writer, editor. In our last segment, Amy Wells did a great interview with rookie punter Ryan Stonehouse. Are you even a little surprised at how his success from Colorado State has translated to the NFL? Uh, not after seeing him this offseason. I mean, I, I watched him uh, in college against Vanderbilt, I think unleashed like an 81 yard punt. I remember watching that game and thinking, well, this kid's got a leg. And then he shows up here at camp and is hitting bombs early on that this kid is legit. Uh, he's got a strong leg. And I think, you know, I think this organization knew that if you let him go, somebody else was going to sign him. And he's continued to do that during the course of the season. This week's opponent, Jacksonville. First time in 52 weeks we have seen the Jaguars. So as you've studied them this week in preparation, Jim, what stands out to you as a difference or differences in Jacksonville? Well, Trevor Lawrence has gotten better and they've lost eight games. But I think six of the eight they've lost in the final couple of minutes. So they could they could be sitting here at six and six and I'm not counting a game against Indianapolis. They lost late too. I mean, this is a team that could be over 500 trying to get into contention to win the AFC South. So I think he's a big part of it. He's thrown it all over the place. He's really settled down. Tra Travis Etienne has gotten a lot better for him. Christian Kirk has been good. So the offense for Jacksonville has gotten better and better. And that's, you know, got to be a concern for the Titans. Some people think he's the fastest back in the NFL. Maybe, maybe yep. not. Defensively, a lot of young talent. What jumps out to you about the Jags defense? Well, they have not been as good on defense. I mean, let's tell it like it is. They have not been as good on defense as they have on offense. I think they have had some shortcomings. They're not uh, playing well enough in the secondary to allow their pass rush to, to get going. They've got 19 sacks this year. Certainly can ri rise up and, and play. But uh, you know they've been winning games or been in games because of, of what the offense has been able to do. All right, so ended up here, Jim. What are your keys to the Titans beating the Jaguars on Sunday in this very important AFC South game? Well, I, I think the Titans need to kind of reclaim their identity a little bit, and that's running the football and uh, you know being good against the run. You know this is you know we've got a home stretch coming up where you can kind of take care of the division 
and put yourself in a really good spot at the very end to maybe potentially get some guys rested up for a postseason. That's not on anybody's mind right now, but that's certainly what I think you've got to do is you've got to run the football. You've got to find uh, you know more plays in the offense and, uh, and kind of get back on a roll like you were during that seven, you know, seven of eight stretch. Read Jim Wyatt at TennesseeTitans.com every single day. He's got great Tennessee Titans information for you there. Thanks for joining us. Thank you, Mike. All right, Talking Ball presented by Duncan on Titans All Access. Next up, your Titans game ticket as we get ready for Sunday at Nissan Stadium against the Jags. Amy Wells rejoins right after this. The Titans back home this week at Nissan Stadium to take on the Jacksonville Jaguars in the first of two meetings in the last five weeks of the season. Now time for your Titans game ticket. I present Amy Wells. Thank you, Mike Keith. When you come out to Nissan Stadium, make sure you bring your spirit. That's it, the spirit fingers. Because it's spirit week for the Tennessee Titans. The Titans are honoring high school football with a performance by the Nolensville High School Marching Band and of course, the NFL's largest student section. American Idol's Hunter Girl will perform the national anthem, and it's also the My Cause, My Cleats game, so make sure you check out your favorite Titans cleats to see the cause that matters the most to them. It's gonna be a lot of fun to watch that one. Oh, I love Spirit Week. Sunday at noon, Central Time, Titans and the Jaguars from Nissan Stadium. Find your Titans radio station in your area and at 11 a.m. Central, this lady, Amy Wells, and her friend, Rhett Bryan, will take you through Titans Countdown, getting you ready for the game. Thanks so much for watching Titans All Access. For Amy Wells, I'm Mike Keith, and we'll see you next time.